Hi there, it's Marzena. The Christmas time is over and I've made my snow fairy, but I've never made an actual Christmas special video. So today I'm presenting you my female version of the Christmas demon Krampus. She might be far from the traditional depiction of the creature, but you know me. I do like to add some of my own creativity to my designs. So, what are we waiting for? Let's dive in! I wanted my Krampus to be an albino creature, so I choose Katrin the Meow. I also think that the facial features of the feline monster high dolls are great for goats and horses. And the Krampus is something like a goat man. Perfect! Let's prepare our base. Doll preparation looks mostly the same every time. I start with cutting all the hair as short as possible. Then I dunk the head in a very very hot water for about one minute. The heat is making the vinyl more soft and squishy, so I can remove the head from the neck pack without breaking it. Also, the glue inside the head is melted, so I can remove it easily along with the remaining hair plugs. When the head is finely bald, I wipe off the factory face with 100% acetone on a cotton pad. Nice and clean. Time for some head shrinking. This is not mandatory. In fact, not many customizers do it. But I am not a big fan of monster high head to body ratio, so I always shrink my heads to get a little more realistic look. I'm using a slow shrinking method here, and I will leave a great tutorial for it in a description box. After 8 days of shrinking, I could reconnect the head with the body. But first I needed to trim down the neck pack and widen the neck hole a little bit. I also cut off her ears. Our little Krampus needs her horns, right? So I marked where I wanted to place them and I drilled the holes with a fine milling cutter. And oh, yeah, I cut off her head. Being inspired by this amazing sculpture by Simone Gamino, so sorry if I butchered the name, I curved a line in her chin. I smoothed the edges with a nail buffer. Using a thick wire and hot glue, I elongated her neck so she would look way more creepy than with her original neck. I also placed the wire reinforcements for all of the horns and for her new ears. I mixed some good amount of epoxy sculpt and used it to cover the neck and to create her horns and ears.
I covered the whole scalp too. The head was still very wobbly, so I decapitated her again and continued sculpting on a separated head. Sculpting all those horns was a little bit tricky, but I think they turned out pretty good. When the epoxy cured, I exposed the top of the wire in her neck, so I could finally put the head back on. This doll will be very fragile, so I'm happy that she will stay with me. Oh, and before you say anything, my thumb wasn't anywhere near the blade. It was just the camera angle that made it look like it was close. You don't need to worry about me. On the next day, she looked like this. I sanded down the epoxy surface to make the transition smoother and to give the primer a tooth to grab on. I wiped off the dust, covered the body with a plastic wrap and sprayed the horned head with two layers of Vallejo white primer. The original Krampus is usually depicted as a black-haired goat man, who accompanies Saint Nicholas on his Christmas visitations. Saint Nicholas rewards well-behaved kids with gifts and the Krampus deals with the naughty ones. It is said that he puts them into his sack that he carries around and takes the kids to his lair. I left the Hans the Naughty Kids part in my design, but I changed my Krampus appearance. First of all, she is a female now. Let's imagine that Krampus is not just one particular counterpart to the San Nicholas, but it's a whole species of horrifying creatures. They are normally black, yes they are, but just like in other species, they can also be born as an albino, with no pigments whatsoever. I love how the albino animals and humans look, so I just couldn't resist here. I also gave my doll demonic eyes with two irises each. At some point I changed the plastic wrap for a piece of cloth because I noticed that the primer and sealant were chipping from the wrap and sticking to the face.
I added blood on her lower lip and chin off camera. Guess what happened to the last naughty kid that she approached? I glossed the eyes and lips with Liquitex gloss varnish and the face up was done. I covered her head with plastic wrap to protect the face up and started the body mutilation. I mean modification. I cut her body into tiny pieces like a psychopath to give her digitigrade legs and elongated arms, forearms and fingers later. I made holes for the wires in each piece and sanded down the plastic seams, panties and edges of the cut-off limbs. To smooth everything down I used a nail buffer at the end. I also drilled a hole for the future tail. I made new wire skeleton for the fingers and limbs and covered it with epoxy, after gluing everything in place of course. I must say I'm better at sculpting hands and feet in wax than epoxy, but I didn't have time for mold making and resin casting, so yeah. I also covered the joints and an old tail hole and I made a new tail for her. The legs I made off camera because it was hard to keep her in a frame without poking the camera above with her head. I let the epoxy dry overnight and on the next morning I could sand down its surface, slim down the fingers a little bit more and finally assemble all the pieces together. I sprayed my girl with two layers of white primer and blushed the body same way as I blushed her face.
I also added blood to her hands because who doesn't love blood under their fingernails on a Christmas morning, right? After three layers of blushing and varnish, I sprayed the body one last time with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat and when it dried I could finally unwrap the head. I really dig her look so far. I decided to add some acrylic hair, but just tiny bits to keep her creepy look. She looks a little bit mangy with those single hair strands just here and there. Perfect. Also glued the hair at the end of her tail and on the back of her ankles. Or heels. Or... I'm not a Fawn's anatomy expert. Okay, time for her stand. I used my good old kitty litter method. I mixed it with a sodol wood glue as always. This particular wood glue, unlike vical glue, makes the mixture expand and by poking it here and there while it cures you can create an even ground-like surface. I sprayed the cured stand with black spray paint and then, because originally Krampus is a Christmas demon, I painted it white to imitate the snow. I also used a bit of white and light blue pan pastels and fixed everything with MSC. Then it was finally time to glue the doll to the stand. Let's experiment a little. I bought this snow crystal paste for this project. So I smeared it all over the snowy part of the stand. And a little bit on her hooves legs, shoulders and horns, just for some tiny snowy details. When the paste cured, I painted the blood splatters on the snow. As the finishing touch, I painted over the blood with Liquitex Gloss Varnish just to add some wetness to it and to make it look fresh.
And that's it! My albino Krampus is done! So, what do you think? Is she creepy enough? I think she is. In fact, she might be my new favorite. I am really, really pleased with how she turned out. The colors, her face, the claws and the blood. I'm just beyond happy. Creepy and bloody is definitely my jam, so making her after my cute snow fairy was pure pleasure. There will be more creepy stuff coming in the future, but unfortunately you will have to wait a little bit longer for my next video. I am graduating my school in January and need to focus on my final exams to get my dental technician diploma. But after that, finally, more workshop time for me. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in what I'm gonna do next, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button for future notifications. Also, I really appreciate all your comments, so don't be shy and let me know what you think about my version of the Krampus. I wish you all a festive, but also safe, New Year's Eve and that the coming year will be better than this one. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Okej. Okay. Nie, tego się spodziewałam.